All right, hockey fans, welcome back. This is your host, ID Jester. We're going to continue talking about matchup hockey. We're going to continue talking about um, the setup, the process, my thoughts. Again, this is going to be another long-winded video, so apologize for that right off the bat, but that's the way I did when I was a teacher, explain things to people over and over again slowly so they understand it and they get it nine times out of ten and they won't need to go back and watch this video. I'm currently uploading the version, um, part one. But, uh, so I will have to stop here when that gets uploaded, and let's continue talking. So we looked at, um, looked at the process, some of the process, looked at the players, we talked about why we have what we have, and what my thoughts on that, so I would check out video one if you haven't done that so far, hopefully you have. Um, so let's talk about the rest of the player cards, shall we? So, um, I don't need that full screen. Thanks very much. I appreciate you not doing what I want you to do. God, I hate this program. All right, so we have uh, skills. We have uh, offense. We have passing. We have skating. We have defense. We have hitting. We have takeaway. But we have other things. We have shot A, shot B, shot C. So there are three qual uh, different qualities of shots. This does not represent position on the ice where they're shooting from obviously better shots are usually closer so you can you know think about it any way you want but shot a is your lowest quality shot uh, maybe you got a man on you and uh, you have uh, you know bad angle you're farther away from the net shot B is kind of your mid-range shots where you're closer to the net, uh, you're a little more open, maybe you have a defender in the way, you have to shoot around him, or maybe you're on a, a backhand, or, you know, it's, you know it's, it's a better shot, but it's not quite as good. Shot C is your best quality shot. So obviously you wanna get the better quality shots for your better quality players. And again, they're rated from one, no, let's try again, three to seven. So you can see, uh, Alexander Ovechkin here, we're just using him as an example. Shot A, he's still got a 1-5 to five to get the shot on goal. Your better scorers are going to have, obviously, better shot chances. Um, so even though it's still a shot A, some players might have a 3 or 4 or 5, maybe even a 6. I don't think you're going to get that high. Usually 3, 4s and 5s. Your shot Bs are going to go anywhere from 3 to 7, because that's kind of your mid-range shots. And then your shot Cs usually go from 4, 5, 6, and 7. Usually your 3s are just when you have players that were, you know, backups or players that didn't score a lot. Uh, if we look at Roman Pollock here, uh, for... Um, Toronto, he scored four goals in 75 games. So he's going to be a 3-3-3 right across the board. He doesn't score a lot. Um, you know, a lot of your defensemen are going to have not very high shot results because they didn't score very much. Connor Carrick here scored two goals in 67 games. So uh, to represent that, he's not going to have very high chance of getting the puck on the net. All right, then uh, we have our defensive stats, but then we also have other things, such as blocking a shot. Again, three to seven. You have your penalty check. We're going to talk about that later on. Again, three to seven. Higher stat is better because you're going to try to pass your penalty check, so penalties not cost in, cost, called on you. And face-offs, three to seven again. Why? Ugh. Um... I think I was doing face-off twos at one point not too long ago, like yesterday or day before, where if they didn't have very good face-off stat, I was just giving them a two. And obviously, I haven't gone through and checked all those stats because I now decided that everything's going to be three to seven. Everything except for 
goalies. Let's talk about goalies. So now, if a shot does come in on the goal, we have to um, have to find out if it's a goal. Obviously, if it comes in a goal, the goalie has to stop the puck, right? So let's look at the goalie outline. There we go. Found it. So at the top is either goalie one or goalie two. Usually your first goalie played more games than your second goalie, your backup goalie, basically. Some teams may have a first, second, and third goalie if they had three that had played enough games. I'm not going to simulate every single player that played at least one game because that would that wouldn't fit on one sheet. So we do have a few openings on the sheets, as we can see here. Uh, if we look at our, um, let's just look at Washington here. Um, normally, these goalies are not up here. Uh, the reason I put the goalies up there is so I could, you know, create a easy sheet that has all the players on there. So we got a couple extra spaces. We could put a, like a goalie three up here, or a couple more defensemen, or whatever. So we got a few spaces to play with yet. So um, goalie one or two usually. Uh, like I said, you might. Some teams maybe have a goalie three, but yeah, whatever. Name of the goalie, and then games played, is goals against average, GAA. How many wins he had, how many losses he had. That's the outside stats. Now let's look at the inside stats. And there's a lot going on here, but basically it's set up the same way as your player cards. If a shot A comes in, the goalie's going to be testing whether or not he is in position to make a quality save on the puck. And it goes from three to seven. So obviously very good chance that uh, Brayton Holtby here is going to be in possession for a shot A. If he's successful, we're going to be looking at the success line here. And if it's a failure, we're going to be looking at the failure. And these numbers here are actually percentile rules not three to seven so as I said everything is three to seven uh, that's except for on the goalie card the goalie card we're going to be looking at the black and the white as a percentile so if uh, a shot a was coming in and Brayton Holby let's take a look at what happens here so again first thing we do is we look at the red dice always the red dice first five he makes his check so successful so 0, 1 to 0, 0,4 percentile, it's going to be a goal. And we ended up rolling black dice first. That was a 7, actually. 79. So Brayton Holtby makes a save. Let's roll it again. That's uh, a 10, so he failed. And in this case, an 84. And even though he failed his check, he wasn't in position. He still made the save. Again, Shot A's are not very good quality shots, so you're not going to get a lot of goals off of A's. You do have a slight chance. Not a lot, but a little bit. Shot B's, same thing. Shot C's, same thing. If the goalie ends up rolling percentile, he rolls on a success, he rolls 90 or higher. He has saved the puck, but a rebound opportunity has happened. And on a failure line, 82% or higher, he has given up a rebound. If a rebound shot comes in, instead of using A, B, or C, we're going to be using the rebound shot uh, position chance. So let's say Holtby makes a save, rebound goes back to um, the offensive team who gets another shot on. So it's a rebound shot. So we're going to roll again, look at the red dice. It's a 7. He failed his positioning. So we're going to look at the failure chart. So 1 to 21, it's going to be a goal, and he rolls a 63. So Hopi makes a save on the rebound. And then we have a great save opportunity. And even though you might actually fail any of these checks, A, B, C, or rebound, there's always a chance that the goalie can make a great save on it. And let's say that we ended up rolling a rebound shot and it came in the goal. He and um, he was uh, looking to make a great save. We would just roll percentile again to see if he makes a great save. In this case, it's 63, so he did make a great save. 
whether he was successful or not. So that's kind of the breakdown of that. That's the goalie cards. Again, same thing. We're going to check a goalie's stats to see if he's in position. If he's successful, or if he fails, we're going to use the top line if he's successful. Less chance for a goal. If he's failure, better chance for goals. The rebound chances, the rebound, and the great saves. So that is uh, how the goalies break down in the game. So you can kind of now uh, see that. All right, so uh, once we find out, so basically we're going to be testing to find out who wins the face-off, who loses the face-off. Then we're going to find out uh, who's making the play, who's not making the play. And then what we need after that, we need the all-important outcome of what happens on the play. So as the offensive team, you can play normal aggressiveness You can play safe, and you can play as a blitz attack. So there are three different charts uh, so far that we're talking about. There's more charts, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so normally, uh, you know, an even strength opportunities early in the first game, you know, in the game. Both teams are going to be playing kind of normal. You know, at any time, a team can say, okay, I'm going to safe attack or I'm going to blitz attack. Uh, both team, both players or both teams can go to blitz attack at the same time. It's a, you know, whatever they decide. And then based upon whether or not your players are successful or they fail, you're going to have a result and it's going to give you, you know, on a 10-sided dice. So once uh, we find out whether the player makes his play or not, he's successful or he fails, uh, then we're going to be looking at the chart to determine what happens on because he passed or failed. So you can see on a normal attack, if the offense wins, if the offensive player wins his check, or if the defensive player loses his check, they get the same result. On a normal attack, if the offensive player loses or the defender wins, they have a different chart they go on. And these charts are slightly different in the fact that if you don't have possession of the puck, <coughs> you gotta take the puck away from your opponent and you win it, <coughs> or the offense makes a bad play, normally in normal hockey, you have a slightly less chance of getting a better result out of it. Just slightly, not much. You can see here, six or 10 are gonna results. On a shot on goal, so that's about a 50% chance. In this case, if you're the defender and you win, or the offense loses, and you got to get possession of the puck, you only have a 40% chance. You will always notice that one, two, and three are always going to be the same, no matter if we're on the safe chart, or on the normal chart, or on the aggressive chart. Number one is a penalty check. Number two is a uh, Icing of the puck number three is a play stoppage because of the puck goes out of the net or out of the out of the rink. Uh, somebody comes in off sides, uh, you know, whatever the situation happens to be. The only time uh, then that is different than that is four through ten. So you have these different charts again. You would have these charts on your table. You could put all these charts on one sheet of paper. But again, it's you're probably going to need these charts a lot in the beginning. Uh, but you know the normal chart, you're going to get used to that because most teams, again, are going to be playing. Um, most teams are going to be playing uh, normal offense, normal defense, uh, unless of course there's a power play or penalty, and then. Obviously, if you're winning late in the game by a couple goals, you might go to safe, and the other team might go to blitz. But, um, you know, you can go to blitz anytime you want. But, of course, the problem with the blitz, if I go to blitz attack, I'm going to get a better chance of scoring. I'm going to have actually a 10, 20, 60% uh, chance of getting a goal or a shot and goal as opposed to a 50% chance. But you can see I'm also giving my opponents a better chance to get a shot on goal as well because you're pushing forward. Uh, you're also going to give them, uh, you know, more more of a chance to, uh, 
go forward. The other thing that comes into play is, depending on how aggressive or defensively you're playing, the chance of you actually getting a block on a shot comes into play. And you can see here, if you're playing normal, a defender's block and a four or less. If you're playing safe, which means you're playing back, you're, got, you're, you're not going as forward as much. You can see here, you actually only have a four, if you're playing safe, you only have a 40% chance as opposed to a 50% chance on the same chart of getting a play uh, uh, result off, um, you know, a shot on goal. But uh, you have a better chance of defending um, with uh, blocks on shots coming in. So we're going to show you how all that works eventually when we get to that. So uh, normally, four or less, if you're playing safe, you've got more defenders in the zone. You might only have one four checker going out. You have four defensemen, you know, four defenders in your defensive zone. You're going to give up more shots, but you're going to block more of them because you're going to be there playing more defensively. Uh, opposite with blitz attack, you're only going to be blocking shots in two or less because you are playing so aggressively. You don't have players playing back. Um, you know, you're trying to get more shots on goal. So there are advantages and disadvantages to going with that. There are power play and penalty kill charts as well, which we'll get to when we look at it. Uh, right, so that's uh, basically the dice are going to give you a flow chart. So I'm um, just going to, just for um, ease of things, I'm just going to say here, we're just going to get rid of the safe and the blitz attack. We're just going to keep the normal play out, and we're going to keep the normal, uh, and these are going to be your two, you know, kind of your two main charts that you're going to be using in normal situations. Um, and we're just going to kind of give you the flow of how things go. We haven't talked about face-offs yet. So face-offs are kind of a different beast. And we talked about always using the 10-sided dice to begin with. But the 10-sided dice on a face-off uh, gives us the result of the play based upon whether or not the players win their face-off check or they fail their face-off check. So in this case, again, just for ease, we're going to assume that Toronto has their number one line out and their number one defender. So that's all the top line here up at the top. And um, Washington's at home. And they are doing the same thing. They got their number ones out there. It's a, you know, first face off of the game. So normally, you know, normal situations, both teams put their number one lines out there uh, to go after one another. Of course, you are, you can do whatever you want. If you are playing for a certain team, um, there will be charts and stuff that come with the game. So if you're playing, you know, if I'm playing as Washington, uh, you're going to roll, you know, roll on the chart to figure out which which line the defenders put out uh, and then, you know, uh, go from there. So you can solitaire this very quickly and easily. But I mean, you know, if I'm solitaring this, I'm going to do one, one early in the game, uh, two, two, three, three, one, one, two, two, three, three. Then maybe both teams put their fourth lines out there. Uh, I might try to mix it up, you know, depending on the score, how many shots in goal, et cetera, et cetera. Some teams, you know, it depends on, and hockey is, you know, kind of all sports. It's more of matchups that you try to get against your opponent. So, you know, if I see, you know, I want my best blockers out there that can block shots from, you know, the scores. So I want to keep my number one line defensive pair available. And, you know, I might want to have my better blockers out there. You know, like uh, if we look at, say, Washington here, Winnick, Beagle, and Wilson, the third line has a block of five, a block of five, and a block of four. You compare that with Ovechkin, which is block of four, Backstrom, which is four, and Oshie, which is four. So they, the number one line is slightly less than average across the board. Line three is, you know, slightly better because they have two average and one that's not average or 
one that's below average. So three is slightly better, so it might be worth putting the three line out and the number one defensive pair. If uh, if I'm ahead, you know, say two to two to one, and it's in the second period, I might want to you know mix things up to keep their put their put their put their um, uh, their offensive line out there, but I've got my best blockers out there. I might go to a safe defense because I'm going to be blocking more at that point. So there's a lot of strategy involved. It's not just, you know, roll the dice and see what happens. In hockey, you know, when you're talking about football, you're talking about, um, uh, you're talking about getting your play call on third and five, do you run a screen pass? Do you throw it deep because the defenders are going to do, you know, they're going to crowd the, the short passes, so you try to beat them over the top. Do you try a draw, a draw play thinking they're going to play uh, pass defense? Uh, if you think of the same thing in hockey, you're doing the same thing with your different matchups since because of the name of the game, the matchup hockey, you're doing your matchups on players based upon their skills and what they can do well, what they can't do well against their opponents. Uh, and then using your, you know, whether I'm blitzing, you know, back to the football analogy, whether I'm blitzing or I'm playing safe defense or whatever, you do the same thing with your normal attack, your safe attack or your blitz attack. Um, so kind of if you think of football, hockey in, in hockey terms, that would that would be how it corresponds. And it looks like, yay, Hockey Matchup Card and Dice Overview Part 1 is now published on my website. Good for us. All right, so I don't have to worry about that now. I can minimize that out of the way. Good, good, good. All right, so uh, like I was saying, face-offs are a slightly different beast in that when we roll, okay, we're going to go to the six-sided, or the red dice first, but what the red dice represents is who's going to end up getting the puck based upon the results of the face-off. So the home team here, which is Washington, as I talked about, um, and there we go. Um, so let's look at this. So the face-offs come in between Matthews, who has a face-off of five, and Backstrom, who has a face-off of seven. Both players are going to be testing to see whether or not they succeed or fail. So the home team, Black Dice, face-off of seven, he rolls a three, he passes. Uh, Austin Matthews, the visiting team, he has a five, he rolled a three. So pass, pass, both players pass, then we look at the red dice to determine whose it goes to. In this case, it goes to the defensive team because it's a 6 through 10. We know that's a defensive uh, team. In this case, the defenders would be the, um, the visitors. Uh, if it was a 1 through 5, it would have been the home team. So in this case, and then these dice here, we don't need to use because we don't need them in this case. But if you wanted to get technical, you could say the face-off 1 they both won their face-off. So if both, team, if both players win the face-off, then it's a scramble for it, and we just roll to find out what position it goes to. Because uh, they both won their face-off. So no one won it cleanly. They're fighting for it. It bounces around. It goes off a couple of skates or whatever. And uh, the defenseman or um, left wing for the defensive team gets possession of the puck. So we don't need these... Uh, lose two dice, but there's no sense in not rolling them, I guess. You know, if you're at home, you could just roll the three dice on face-offs. So now we know uh, where will puck go? Oh, there it is. It's hiding. Uh, we know that Wash, uh, we know that Toronto, the visiting team, won the face-off, right? Let's actually slide this over. Let's see, and slide this over. Alright, so now we're going to go right into a uh, normal play situation here. Uh, I don't know where I can put this. I could keep this aside, but I really want to keep it out here so you guys can see everything. Um, yeah, look. We'll, Alright, so we know that uh, Toronto wins the face-off. No time off the clock, but now we have our first play. And I'm going to go through the first couple really, really slowly so you can see how this goes. So I'm just going to arrange the dice, try not to change the dice facing so that would throw everyone off 
flow chart six. So we're going to be testing what? We're going to be testing the um, left wing of the defensive team. What? That's Alexander Ovechkin. What are we going to be testing? Well, we're going to look at the defensive dice here because he did not have the puck. So that is a 10, right? We know that 10 on defensive players is takeaway. So Al Vanders tries to steal the puck away. He has a five rating. He rolled a two, so he is successful. So in this case, we have a normal attack because both teams are playing normal attack. The defender won his matchup. And so we're going to roll again on this chart to find out what happens. Boom, 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 boom. And it goes, and I'm just going to arrange the dice again so we can see all the results. I'm trying not to get any. Oh, that's a, uh, uh, um, that was a six. Just remember that was a six. Uh, and so trying to keep them so it's easier for you guys to see how the flow of the game goes instead of just having them randomly on the sheet. So I have Andrew Ovenskin. He took it away uh, from the... Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. So now we're going to look on the defender. One is one is check. Look at the red dice first. That is a six. So they take possession of the puck. And they weren't able to get a shot on goal. Nothing different happened. That's it. Boom. We can ignore all the other dice at this point because it just Washington takes possession of it. They now have possession of the puck. It's over. Boom. Done. Now we go. Roll. Now the offensive team, 1 to 5 is going to be Washington. 6 to 10 is going to be the defensive team, right? So again, that's a 1. That is a 4. That is a 3. That is a 6. That is a 3. So that's a 3. Just yeah, That was a 3. So 1. We know we're going to be testing offensive team. Left wing. Well, a lot of left wings in this so far. So against Alvander Ovenska, we're going to be testing. What are we going to be testing for? We're going to be testing his offensive ability. One to four. Offense, seven or less. He rolled a six. He's successful. This time, the offensive man won his check. So we're going to be using this chart. We're just going to simply roll again and find out what happens. Is a 10. That is very good. And now we're going to be looking at some new results. So this is good. I'm glad that came up. Do, 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 do. Oh, that was a 10. Just remember that was a 10. All right. So 10 is result on the normal attack offensive one. So that's a shot on goal C. So we got to find out who's getting this shot, right? That 10 shows us what the play result is. So that doesn't give us a position. So what's going to give us the position? That's going to be the dice. The dice is going to give us the position of eight. In this case, that's going to be the right wing. T.J. Oshi is getting a C shot. So if we look at T.J. Oshi, he's got a C7, good scorer. He rolled a six. He's successful. He is going to get it on net. Is it blocked, though? We have to look and see. Is it blocked? Normally, defenders are going to block on a four or less. The dice is a six. He gets it through. No block. So no opportunity for the defenders to block it at all. Right? Um, so we've got a shot on goal. It's on now. Number one goalie, Frederick Anderson. It's up to him to make the stop. So let's find out if he stops it. And Ovenskin brings it in over the line. He slides it over to Oshi in the slots. Oshi beats his man, comes in right on Anderson. He lifts one, backhander. And we're going to get out the dice to see whether or not it's a goal or not. Oh, that was a one. Remember, that was a one, not a seven. It fell over. Sorry about that. So first thing we're going to do, Frederick Anderson, we're going to look at C. He's got a six. So Frederick Anderson is a six. Did he pass or fail his check? We look at the red side of the dice. It is a six. So he just barely gets in position for it. So on a one to 12, it is a goal. We look at the percentile. The percentile say zero nine. That is on goal. That is a good goal because it's a one to 12. 
TJ Oshie is going to possibly light the lamp here. Remember, even though it's on goal, Frederick Anderson can make a great save. So he has only a 1 to 4% chance of making a save. So we're going to roll percentile and just look at the percentile dice. Again, you could just pick up the percentile and roll them, but I can't obviously do that here. We need a 0, 1 to 0, 4. It is a 21 to 1. So he doesn't make a great save. And TJ O.C. lights the lamp just 40 seconds. Remember the first play? The first play was Alvandro Ovenskin taking the puck away and getting a uh, just a possession of the pucks. So that was the first play. So that was the first 20 seconds. Next 20 seconds was him making the play. He won his check, and he got a shot C result over to TJ Osi. So we're 40 seconds, about 40 seconds in the game. So 37 seconds in, TJ Osi tallies one in the back of the net. Boom, done. Uh, that's how that goes, and I'm surprised a team scored that easily in this quick in the game. So we're going to go ahead and put both team line twos out there. So now we're doing team line twos. We're going back to the faceoff. All right, uh, so it is a 10 for the offensive team. He's going to fail his check. And, oh, so... Face-offs, yes. So here's what happens. You're either going to have both face-off men win their check. In that case, it's a loose puck. And we look at the red dice. <coughs> You're going to have both um, centermen lose the face-off. In that case, it's a loose puck. And we look at the red dice. Or you're going to have one pass and one fail. I can look at this dice again. We know all the results are seven, three to seven. I know, just by looking at this, he failed, he passed, unless he's a really bad faceman. So, you know, he, he only has a four, but he passed. <laughs> Good sense of, remember, oh, uh, no, uh, this is um, Tyler Boric, because uh, home team, defensive team. So home team lost the faceoff, so Kuznetsov got beat on the faceoff by Tyler Bozik, and we don't use the red dice in this case at all because he won the faceoff. He didn't make it. So if one guy wins, the other guy fails, he wins the faceoff for his team. So Toronto gets possession of the buck. Again, I'm going through this really slowly to show you how things play. But get things going, you can go really, really, really fast. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to look at the left wing. I'm just going to just pull out the important dice at this point. It's going to be a five, which is his passing. That's going to be Zach Hyman. His passing is a five. Um, he rolled a nine. So he failed. So we're on the normal attack. Defender failed. What happens? And it is a one. It's going to be a penalty check. Ah, good. Penalty checks come up. So penalty checks are like face-offs in that we have a penalty check. And who is the penalty check on? We look at the uh, offensive team player, position two. So in this came Tyler Bozik. And we're going to be looking at the defenders position number eight, which happens to be Justin Williams. We're going to find out whether or not each of them make or pass or lose their face-off check, or their penalty check, sorry. All right, so the, pen the penalty check, because we rolled a one, one is always penalty check. Two is also always icing of the puck. Three is always a play stoppage. So those plays are always happen all the time. 10% chance of each of these plays happen. Then four to 10 are going to vary depending on your stance and whether or not you have possession of the puck, etc. You'll learn those pretty quick, though. Um, they're not that different. Uh, most of the time, most, I'm not saying every single time, but most of the time, a zero is going to result in a shot C. Uh, not always, but sometimes uh, you can play safe and it won't be actually a shot C. It'll only be a shot B. So, um, yeah. Anyways, all these charts uh, go on one another sheet. Uh, I just don't want to put another full sheet out here at this point. Um, because I think, you know, there's enough on the screen and I can do it this way just as easy. So anyways, we have a penalty check, which is always a number one. We're going to be looking at the offensive team. That's what, again, black dice offensive team. That's the centerman. He's got a 
P7, penalty is 7. So 1 to 7, he passes. 5, he passed. So he did no penalty on him. And we're also going to be looking at position 8, which is, again, each team has their number 2s out. Justin Williams, he's got a p penalty of 6. He rolled a 4. So both teams, uh, you know, had a chance. Neither one of them failed their chance. So no penalty call at all. And we're going to have another... Um, where is our chart here? Um, I'm going to have to get this chart out. I wasn't thinking I was going to, but obviously you never know what's going to happen when you start rolling dice. Uh, I'm going to create this really quickly. There we go. And we'll just call it pen for now. That's fine. All right, get rid of that. Slide this out of the way so I can get the chart. There we go. There's the penalty result check. So this is going to tell us what happens after the penalty checks. Now, whistle may blow before shot and goal, depending on the outcome of the penalty checks. So if one team, let's say the offensive team, does fail their penalty check and the defensive team does not, then the defensive team could get a shot on goal, but the offensive team could not. Because as soon as you touch the puck, when you have a penalty called against you, it, the whistle is blown and it's a dead play. In this case, neither team had a penalty, so all these results come into play. And we're just going to roll the 10-sided dice to see what happens. In this case, it's a play stoppage. So um, we had the penalty checks, nothing happened, and one of the teams sent the puck in off sides or, or was knocked out of the zone uh, over the boards in the neutral zone as they were scrumming around for it. whatever you want to, you know, mind's eye it. Uh, you can see the offensive is going to keep possession of the puck or the defender is taken away. You got an offensive shot on goal, a defensive shot on goal, offensive shot on goal, B, defensive shot on goal, C, uh, B. Again, the missile may blow. So let's say that we had a situation where the offensive team did have failed their penalty check. Uh, we'll say Justin Williams rolled an eight, so he failed his check. So Justin Williams is going to have a uh, delay penalty call. We got to find out what happens. So we roll the dice. We get a six. In this case, defensive takes possession of the puck. So at this point, okay, I'm glad this result came up. Defenders take possession of the puck. Justin Williams has got a delayed penalty on him. And we go through the normal process, but uh, in this situation, we have an extra skater on the ice. So at this point, somebody would say, all right, I'm, I'm bringing in, I have my number twos out there. Remember, we have the twos out there. Uh, and uh, Austin Matthews jumps back on the ice. So he'll be in position uh, as a six skater. Obviously, out of one to five, we don't have that. But what he brings to the table is the fact that any time we go to a center result, um, the, we can choose either Austin Matthews or Tyler Bozak uh, to get the result of the play. Obviously, you know, if it's a shot and goal, we might want to choose Austin Matthews because he's better. If it's a defensive one, we might want to choose... Well, Austin Matthews is actually... Slightly better defensively than Tyler Bozak. Um, but as soon as um, we have a result that gives it back to now the defensive team, which is uh, Washington, because they have a delayed call on them, they are now the defensive team. Uh, we can minimize that out of the way, get that out of the way. There we go. So we go back to the same process here. Boom, boom, boom. So uh, delayed penalty call here, Justin Williams. And we have uh, two lines in for both teams. Austin Matthews jumps over the boards. He's on the ice. Oh, what I was saying, that gives the offensive team a plus one to all of their stats because they have an extra man advantage. Plus one to all of your stats. So in this case, we're looking at eight, which again, defensive team, right wing, Justin Williams. We're going to be looking at three. We're going to be looking at his defense. And, oh, I'm sorry. Defensive team, sorry. Eight. Defensive team is, uh, so eight is going to be a defensive right wing. 
in this case, Justin Williams, the one that's got the penalty, delayed penalty call on him. We're going to be testing position, uh, we're going to be testing six, which is his hitting ability. And he has a four. He rolled a nine. I could have just looked at the nine and go, oh, he's going to fail because we know eight, nine, and ten are all failures. So Dustin Williams, not only does he have a penalty called on him, but he also has now missed his t um, hitting skill and he failed it horribly. And so now we're going to get a uh, normal attack, offense win. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, offensive win or defensive lose. So the defenseman lost his check, so we're going to be using this again. It's a one, so that is going to be another penalty check. In this case, uh, we automatically would blow the whistle. There's no penalty check. Uh, again, once there's a delay penalty, we're just, at this point, we're going to assume that uh, the whistle blows as someone touches, you know, the uh, uh, defenders touch the puck. Uh, if it would have been a shot and goal, we would have went through the shot and goal results. Uh, as soon as um, uh, the save is made, then the whistle would blow. If you know anything about hockey, you, you understand all this stuff. So we're going to have a power play now for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it's going to be a power play opportunity power play. So I'm um, actually... <laughs> Sometimes things work out really, really well when you're doing these sims. And sometimes they don't. Because I want to show all these things, but I don't just want to go and show them to you. I want, them, want you to see how things play. And when they do end up popping up, it's like, wow, that's awesome. Because I need to create these as a sheet for us here. So, PP. Save. Save. PK. Uh, we can slide this normal on there because we're not going to need that because we have a power play. And we have a penalty kill. So here are the power play penalty kill charts. Uh, and, again, because I have one extra player out there, all of my stats are plus one. And any time a result goes to a position for the defenseman, or for the defensive team, that, uh, or the, any time, let's start again. Any time, uh, in this case, Washington, they're going to be putting out... Um, we're going to be putting out left wing Winnick, right wing Wilson. Uh, we're going to go back to our number one defenseman pairs. So we're going to get a little fancy here. Hopefully it doesn't screw us up. So Winnick, Wilson, Nisikin, and Carlson will come out for the defensive play against the uh, power uh, penalty kill. They're going to come out for the penalty kill. Normally, on a 5 and 4 power play, you do not include a center. So that means anytime a center uh, position is rolled for Washington, it's an automatic failure. So let's say that uh, Toronto gets a shot on goal, but it's blocked by the centerman. Well, they don't have a centerman, so it's obviously not a block. Uh, and uh, Toronto gets a plus one to all of their uh, stats. If they have a two-man advantage... Two men are in the penalty box for Washington. They would get a plus two to all the results. Again, if that's a situation, you normally play one centerman and two defensemen on the defense. So it would be, uh, say, Jay Beagle and Matt Nisigan and John Carlson uh, playing for, if it was a five on three. Each play represents 20 seconds. Again, face-offs. Rebound shots, you know, they don't take any time off the clock, but each play. So you basically have six plays that you're going to get to try for two-minute penalty. Um, and in this case, uh, right now, all the penalties are two minutes. I'm still trying to... 95% of all penalties in hockey are two-minute penalties, whether they're blown at the same time against both teams or against one player. I'm trying to figure out if it's worth adding in more complexity in, into the game to get, 
these rare opportunities where you have a misconduct or you have a uh, you know a five minute major penalty or you have a, a two and two uh, so a four minute power play is it worth that extra complexity when it, they hardly ever happen? I suppose so. I'm just trying to figure out the best and easiest way to do that. So I haven't done that yet. So uh, anyways, uh, for Toronto, they are going to put out, they're going to bring out their number one line. And they're going to bring out their number three defenders. So Pollock and Carrick. And again, I would have this on remember those sheets we talked about in episode number one well, that's not the sheets uh here's the sheets down here i would probably have a list here that shows you like powerpoint number one uses these players you can use anybody you want because again you're the coach so we're the coach we're going to go just for ease i'm going to go number one and number threes for washington uh it's going to be Winnick, Wilson, Nisikin, and Carlson. And again, you would have maybe little tokens at home, like pennies or, you know, whatever. Little tokens, you could just put them on these positions so it's easier, uh, especially when you're mixing lines up. Because you would have your little sheet of paper. Um, I'm also thinking about, like, you could also use, like, a sheet protector. And you could just put, you know, like a red X over the players that are out and then just wipe it off. If you had like a, you know, like a little marker, you just wipe it off. Uh, so you could slide your team sheets into like sheet protectors. I think that's an awesome idea as well. I might include that in my game. Who knows? Uh, anyways, so we have the power play and the penalty kill. Now notice there is some interesting things that happen with the power play and the penalty kill. You will notice that the power play, if the offensive wins or the defenders lose, the defenders are going to block on a six or less. So because they're playing more defensively, they're going to keep people in the zone. They know they you know, are a man down. Uh, so they're going to have a better chance of blocking it. Uh, you know, kind of like a safe defense where you got a six or less on a shot. Again, remember that basically 20% chance that if they do get a block, that the position is going to be called for, and that position, there is no one there, so it's an automatic failure. So even though they have a higher chance, they do have a less chance of a normal safe defense because if that position is called for, in this case, the center position, um, it's an automatic failure. Uh, and notice on the power play, if the offensive lose or the defensive wins, the defenders only block on a normal chance, four or less. So they don't get, because they're playing so aggressively and they're going forward a lot of times, they don't have a lot of defense of players back. So they just get like the normal. And it's switched on the penalty kill. If the penalty, kills, penalty killers have the puck, defenders, in this case, the team with the power play, are only going to block on four. And if they lose, then the penalty killers are back to six. So it's a four, six, or six, four. And you'll see how that plays out here as we do a penalty. Uh, the other thing that comes into play with a penalty is if we roll uh, the dice and it goes to the defensive uh, centerman, which would be position number seven, Right? If it goes to position number seven or position number two, whether they win or lose the faceoff, uh, there is no centerman, so it's an automatic failure. It's going to be a turnover to the other team. So always, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages. So we go to a normal faceoff. In this case, Winnick is a three, Wilson is a two, so I guess it's going to be Winnick taking it for uh, Wilson would actually be a three. God, I'm going to have to go back and double check my sheets on that. Coming out uh, against Matthews, he's a face-off of five. All right, so offensive team failed. Defensive team, he rolled a six. They both teams failed, so it goes to a random position. Random position is four, which is the home team, and that's going to be the left defenseman. So uh, somehow Winnick wins the face-off because they both actually lost. There's a scramble for the puck. And uh, Nisikin, left defenseman out there, is going to uh, win position of uh, possession of the puck. So penalty killers have possession of the puck at this point, right? 
So we're going to roll. Dun, 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 find out what position we're going to be testing. It is position number six. That's the defensive, which happens to be Toronto in this case, right? The defensive left wing is out there is James Van Riensdyk. And we're going to be testing his defensive skills, uh, which is a one. If we don't know, it was a one, by the way. It was a one. Uh, do we need to look at the chart to figure it out? No. We know he automatically wins. One, two, automatic. So we know that Ramstein Dyke has made the play. So in this case, we have a uh, penalty kill. Defenders win, offensive lose. So we go right to that. We roll the charts. And we find out what happened. It is just a five. They take possession. So Ramstein Dyke knocks it over to Nylander, and Toronto gets possession of the puck. That is one of six plays. We will now do play number two. Now the penalty killers have the puck. I remember each one of them get a plus one to their stat as well. Uh, so in this case, it is going to be number six. That is a left wing for the defenders. There is a left wing out there. His happens to be Winnick. We know that Winnick wins it because it's a two. Remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, that's wrong. It's going to be a 10, so it's going to be his um, defensive takeaway ability rolled a 7. He has a 5, so Winnick actually fails the test. It's just too hard for him, so he failed the test. So we have the power play. Defenders lose uh, power play. Uh, defenders... Uh, this is actually, huh, this is actually typed wrong. It should be offensive win, defensive loss. I was probably copying and pasting too much, and I didn't check that. Good thing I found that. I'm actually going to change that on my sheet right now. Offense win, oops, let's put it all capitalized, win, defense lose. Okay. Uh, we could just make a new sheet real quick. So it's not going to throw anyone off. This is pen and save. And do I overwrite? Yes, I want to overwrite. So we could just close that out. Bring this. Oh, uh, wait a bit. What? Yes. Okay. Pen. There it is. All right. So offensive one. Huh. Uh, so, or defensive loss. So in this case, it was a defensive loss because, um, Winnick didn't make the play. Right? So, um, uh, 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 where was I now? I'm confused. Right, he didn't make the play, so now we have to roll and find out what happens. What's the result? Since when he couldn't make the play, what happened? It's a five. And we have the... Let's see, what happened? I'm trying to remember because I've thrown off now. Uh, when it couldn't make the play, so is the defenders, the power play team, defensive lose, right? So we have a, uh, oh, I brought, damn, penalty kill, power play. It should be PP. That's what's throwing me off. Uh, -huh. okay. Sorry. PP power play. There we go. Yes. All right. Now it should be right. There we go. All right. <sighs> so the penalty killers, uh, the defensemen, the defensive team lost their check. Winnick lost their check. We rolled a five on it. That is still wrong. How can that be? Stop. That is. Oh, I'm doing the wrong. That's why. Ha 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 ha. Ah, I love it when you have to do things on the fly and get it wrong. Now let's do power play. I'm doing the wrong. I was doing penalty kill. No wonder it was wrong. They don't want to ice the puck. Of course they don't want to ice the puck. Jeez Louise. It's a five. Five is a shot and goal. A. There we go. Yay. Five. Shot and goal. A. Who gets the shot off? It's going to be James Van Reensdyke because he is position number one. Is he successful? Let's look at his green dice. That's a six. He's normally a five. Pretty good score. 50-50 chance. Remember, because he is on the power play, all his stats go up by one. He is now a six. 
He rolls a six, so Van Riemsdyk gets, because they're on the power play, this is, you know, how power plays uh, come into, you know, the different stats, and good this came up, uh, can change a unsuccess to a success. So that is going to be shot and goal. Remember, defenders are going to block on a six or less. It was a six, so defenders have a chance to block. So how does that happen? Way, good question. We look at the defensive dice. It's a nine. So we're actually going to use the defensive dice this time. Nine is the left defenseman. Left defenseman out there was Nisikin. Nisikin. Yes, I believe that's how you say that. And he rolls an eight. Does he have an eight? Well, we know he doesn't have an eight because that eight's too high. We know eights, nines, and tens are failures. So he had the opportunity. He missed the block. So that is a shot on goal. James Van Riensdyk. He gets a, I think it was an A, right? Yes, five is an A. So Brayton Holtby now has to make the save. Holtby rolls a nine, so he's not in position. That means zero one to zero eight is a goal. It's a 36. He saves it. Easy save for Holtby. And he's going to freeze the puck, give his team a chance to change players. That was the second play, so 40 seconds into the power play. There's going to be four more plays on this power play opportunity. Let's go ahead and do another one. We're going to start with the faceoff. Players changing. We're going to go to Burakowski and Connolly out for Vancouver, and Osner and Orbix, so the number two defenseman and the number fours. Normally, on your power kill, you use your third and fourth line guys anyways because they don't ever get any time on the ice when it's – uh, even strength, and that way you can leave your better scores, which are usually your lines one and two. You can get them rest for two minutes, get them a nice solid rest, so when they come back out, they're ready to roll. Yeah, you're not always. You can do whatever you want. You're the goalie, or you're the um, the player. Uh, this time we're just going to bring out the third lines right across the board for Toronto, just to make things easy on myself here. All right. Uh, so the face-off is going to be, again, more twos. i got to change these face-offs. I think what I was doing was I was just saying, this player did not have enough face-off to qualify, so I'm just going to give him a two so he automatically fails. But then I thought about it, well, it can't automatically fail someone, so we're, I just have to go back and make sure I change all my face-offs from twos back to a minimum of threes. So just ignore all the twos on the face-offs. Um, anyways... You know, you could run into a problem where you have an auto fail and you have an auto fail, and then what happens then? <laughs> if both if both players auto fail, that's not the way to do it. So after rethinking it, I decided to redo that. So obviously I didn't go back and update my sheets. So we still have power play opportunity. There's been 40 seconds gone on this one, roughly. You know, it's not exactly, but uh, we have a face-off opportunity. And... It's going to, let's look at the results, four for the home team. That's Berikoski, yeah, because they would have a three, minimum of three. So he's going to fail. Berikoski fails. And your defensive team is line three. He's going to face off a five, he rolled a seven, so he fails. So both teams fail to face off. It's a scramble for it. We go to 10, position 10. Is the defensive, uh, the visiting team, um, right defenseman? So their defense, you know, you don't need to know that other than you have to make sure the player's on the ice, right? So it's going to go to 10. Uh, so Toronto gets possession of the puck. So they're on the power play. Again, no time off the clock for faceoffs or anything, just for the main plays. So we're going to be looking at position number four. That's the left defenseman. What position, uh, what are we doing with him? Well, it doesn't matter. You know, again, I can see that it's a 10. And we could look at the chart to see what, he, what we're testing. But I can see he automatically passing it. Uh, nope, I can't. I'm sorry. Getting crazy. I changed, I changed the color of the dice this morning. That was actually an eight. So uh, eight, again, is going to be... Um, I got it covered up, so you can't see it. Eight for the... Uh, uh, I'm going to re-roll this because I don't remember what the hell the dice were. I'm going to stop moving them so you guys can just 
<laughs> just deal with it. All right. So Toronto has the puck. Position two, that's going to be the centerman. And he's going to be uh, a two and then a two. Black and then the green. So he's going to be testing his uh, offensive skill. And he rolled a two, which means he auto-passed it. And so now we know that uh, Austin Matthews made his offensive check. And he passed it while he was on the power play. So we're going to look at the offensive one while they're on the power play. And the result is an eight. So that's going to be a shot B. Shot B is going to position number four. That is the left defenseman. We have the third line says Roman Pollock out there. His B is only a three. He's not very good. He rolls a 10. So, well, we could have looked at that and seen that it was an automatic miss. In this case, it is a miss uh, wide. That results in a loose puck situation. On a loose puck, we just quickly roll the dice. And we're going to compare the offensive team with the defensive team. And the offensive team gets a plus one to their result because they have one extra man out there. A loose puck results as uh, Roman Pollock sends the shot wide of the net. And who gets it is the higher result. So nine for the offensive team plus one is ten. Two for the defensive team. Uh, so obviously... Toronto gets possession. That is the third play of this um, penalty. Let's go to play number four. So we're going to position number nine. That's going to be the uh, left defenseman. I think we said it was going to be Alsner and Orbic were out there for, um, I think it was. We're going to go with Burkowski, Connolly, Alsner, and Orbic. No. I think we said, uh, I don't remember. Who did we say was coming out there? Yeah, we'll say Alsner, Orpik, Burkowski, and Connolly. Again, you would have little tokens at home you could put over the positions that are out there. Or, you know, like I said, you would have um, you would have all this information down here in your sheet, which I don't currently have. And you could put a little token next to you. Okay, we have power point number one out, power point number two. It would tell you which position, and then you could check the, the player there quickly and easily do that. Um, so, again, um, you know, I'm a little confused because I've got to keep track of everything. Uh, Alsner here. We're just going to say Alsner, Orbic, Burkowski, and Connolly. So we're testing Alsner. What are we testing? Alsner defensively. Come on, slide over. Is it four? So that's going to be his defensive ability. Alistair is a chief seven. Pretty decent. And his result is a three. That was a three, so he's successful. So we have the penalty killers. Uh, where's the penalty kills? Oh, probably behind here because I moved the other sheet out of the way. Uh, which one is it, though? Penalty kill. There we go. Boop, boop. Be much easier if I had this on a sheet of paper, but there's just not enough room to put another sheet of paper out or another page because all the results would be really, really tiny. We wouldn't be able to see it. So if you're at home, you have your one sheet of paper out for your Toronto, one sheet for Washington. You have your result sheet. Maybe it might be two sided. So your normal results are on your front. You know, your power play and stuff might be on the back of the sheet. So you have the penalty killers. And, no, we have the power play and the uh, defenders won. So we have to roll on that chart there as, uh, who was it? Alistair made a good defensive play there. And we get an eight for results. So they actually get a shot on goal A. So now they are on the attack. Uh, this is five which it tells us the position and this happens to be the right defenseman. So you got a sh uh, eight shot a because the defenders won shot a is an eight shot a right. Uh, so they are now have the possession of the puck. So the offensive team is a five that tells us that it is going to be Position number five, which is the right defenseman, Brooks Orpik in this case. He has a shot B of only three. Again, you're going to get used to defenders. Oh, that was a zero, by the way. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. 
it's uh, this dice actually, black green. Um, he's a three. He actually rolled a three. So Orpix gets off a shot and it's on goal. There, uh, shorthanded opportunity coming in on Frederick Anderson. This is a um, shot A. So we're going to see if or uh, Anderson makes a save here. So red dice. He rolled a five, so he's in position. So zero one to zero six. It's a good goal, and he rolled a zero zero. So in this case, zero zero percentile is going to be up to 100 so 00 is 100 if that would have been a 01 i could have almost been a shorthand goal it just about was 00 is going to be a uh, rebound here anderson gives up the rebound so we've got to find out who gets the rebound so again go back to kind of a roll where you find out and you look at the results the results are the offensive team rolled a nine. The defensive team, in this case, Toronto, rolls a two. Uh, they get plus one because they're on the power play. So that makes it a three. But uh, the offensive team wins possession of the puck, assuming the player is on the ice, and that is a ten. So the rebound goes right back to the right defenseman, and he's going to get a rebound shot on Frederick Anderson. So Brooks... Elsner brings it in, uh, the defenseman, doing all the work here. He, he slides the shot over to Orbic. Orbic puts it on goal. Anderson makes a save. <coughs> the rebound <coughs> comes right back out to Orbic, who puts a rebound opportunity right back on. Uh, so no roll for that. This is an automatic shot back on goal. Uh, so we have Anderson here. We need to uh, see if he makes a save, 20, 15 or less, or 22, depending on whether he makes his check. This could be bad. Three, he makes his check. So uh, six or less. One to 15, he rolls a zero four. So Orpic, the shorthanded tally, shorthanded puts, he only had zero goals in the regular season. Wow, he scores a shorthanded tally in game number one of the playoffs. Unbelievable on the rebound opportunity. Hmm. I might. I might. I might on the rebound. I might actually have them. Now that I think about it, I might actually have the re-roll because that would. Yeah, it makes more sense, I guess. You still have to put it back on net. So let's say um, the rebound, let's go back a little bit. Um, he sends out the rebound on the 0 0. Let's re roll. We're going to change the rule right now in that it goes to Orbit because we rolled that. But he still has to make his uh, C chance. So 1 to 4, right? He's still, got to, he's still got to make sure he gets it back on goal. He rolls a, a, an 8 there on his uh, check so he fails actually it would be the result check so yeah it was actually a three so you look at the result dice these are what i call the result dice these are the like the position dice and then this is the, the what i call the chart dice because normally it resu results in a play off a chart so you would have looked at the result dice so that is a three so that is a shorthanded tally because he does make the uh the rebound back in, even though he has zero goals. Wow. Uh, he gets a shorthanded tally. So that's uh, that's going to be your kind of overview, quick review, kind of uh, look at how things play. We're actually going to get, um, I just want to bring the version to you and get your guys' thoughts and opinions on it. Let you guys get your look at it, see what you think. Uh, you can see how things play out. I need to get a sheet created so I can keep track of, uh, you know, timing and uh, power plays and penalties and all that. Uh, and some of this other stuff now is going to be off screen now that you kind of see how things are handled. So that way you can kind of flow a little bit faster and I don't have to show you exactly. Um, we start an actual game. I'm going to go slow for the first couple plays. 
and then afterwards I'm basically going to be taking a lot of these sheets off the screen so I don't need to keep them and I don't need to keep wasting time moving things around I probably keep this one out and maybe another one that we use a lot out uh, but some of the other sheets I'm just going to keep uh, off line right so I got several sheets over here I got a whole bunch of them that I don't need normal we'll probably keep that one out we do like a normal game we'll have normal and your position check chart until people get used to that I guess all right well that is uh, kind of the overview of the flow of the game and uh, Jesus Christ I got like 12 sheets open over here unbelievable um, so yeah you can kind of see the flow of the game again it's gonna be a little bit slow in the beginning is you know you kind of show and you kind of figure things out but I mean eventually if you're getting good you can go okay look at the red dice and I'm, I know that's going to be an offensive player. So the first thing I would do is look at the green dice. If it's a 1-2, I know we've passed. If it's an 8-9-10, I know we failed. And then I would look at the position. Uh, and even though the flow chart goes red to black to green, or red to white to yellow, you can kind of see that. So I can see, okay, well, if it's an 8-9 or 10, if I know a, I got a block opportunity coming on, you know, I know this is, a, if it's a shot and goal, I know it's successful. And I know that this one, I'm going to have to look and see position number seven. Was that a block or not? Uh, you know, let's check his rating and see if it's four or less. Oh, nope, that's not the, see, I'm getting confused here now. Um, it's a six or less. So white, yellow. I'm not sure I like the white, yellow combo. I switched, I had blue in there. And it's kind of throwing me off because I was practicing. What happened? Let's try again. Let's see. Can I add another dice? One D ten plus. Uh, I had like this light blue. Maybe uh, see if I try to look at color combinations that kind of go together a little bit. Black kind of goes with the green. I thought maybe white and yellow would go together. I kind of like the white and the blue, maybe. You know, if you were doing this at home, you could even have the black and the green dice on your left-hand side, and you could have your white and blue dice on your right-hand side, and then you pick them up and throw them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe I just throwing them all together would be easier. I don't know if I like the blue or the yellow, but probably keep stick with the yellow. Anyways, that'll be it for episode number two. Next time we're actually going to get into an actual game and get to play in and and um, you know I don't know. If, um, uh, yeah, we'll just get to playing. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye now.